Good morning, uh, students. My name is uh, Vakar Ahmed, and uh, I can't, presently I teach in Government MEM College as a lecturer. So I also am a PhD student in Department of Geology in University of Jammu. So today we will be talking about earthquakes. Uh, although my expertise it's on hydrocarbons, but still being a domicile of Jammu and Kashmir state, which is a Himalayan state in the northernmost state of our country. So it becomes really important to understand earthquakes, and we frequently have witnessed earthquakes, I mean, uh, up to that certain limit, which probably the other uh, Indian counterparts, they have not witnessed. So it becomes really important to talk openly about the earthquakes and it's the disaster related in our state. So let me just start before knowing anything else. I mean, we should know about how our earth has been made. And uh, the geologists, the scientists, they have one job. They look around all the reasons. I mean, if we talk about earthquake, the word earthquake, it implies simply about the ground shaking movements. So, I mean, from the past, we have witnessed, I mean, the ground, and there is no specific time or place. So this really um, I mean, triggered a sense of knowing among scientists that why do these earthquakes happen? So it all lies in the history, in the scientific buildup of our Earth, in the origin of our Earth. So if we talk about interior, our Earth is principally made up of three layers, crust, mantle, and core, which goes round about the diameter of our Earth or radius about of, of our Earth is 6,400 kilometers. So using some technologies and uh, state-of-the-art technologies, and uh, we came to know about the interior of Earth, how actually Earth is, uh, how actually Earth is. So it's basically moving Earth's crust. It's like a conveyor belt. The heat hot spots they rise from core. The heat is generated inside the core of our Earth, and it moves up like a conveyor belt, and it drags the lithosphere with it. So we scientists came across the particular boundaries in our earth crust, our particular sutures or breakage. The earth crust is not as a whole. It's uh, in breaking into pieces, small pieces. There are nearly about 20 major tectonic plates uh, that include Indo-Australian plate, African plate, Atlantic plate, American plate, North American plate, and these are just one of the major plates. So similarly, there are several microplates as well. So all the science of tectonics, and it leads to the knowing of earthquakes. So each and every earthquake that is happening uh, on our earth crust, it's because of the movement among these tectonic plates. And we have three major boundaries, which we call as uh, convergent plate boundary, divergent plate boundary, and transform plate boundary. How do we differentiate this when two plates are moving together, this is a convergent type of plate boundary. Similarly, if the two plates are moving apart from each other, that is a divergent type of plate boundary. And the third and last, if these plates slide past against each other, that is transform plate boundary. So all the earthquakes, this happen in this three type of, only three type of settings. So let's talk about Jammu and Kashmir. We are in the northernmost part of our country, Himalayas, and which is flanked in the north by the Himalayas, the youngest and the largest mountain chains in, of the world. So I've got some slides to show, just as why do we need particularly to know about earthquakes. And since talking about plate tectonics, our subcontinent, India, it was not at the present location where it is now. It has traveled thousands of kilometers from one part, one minute it was a supercontinent, maybe probably most of us know that, Pangaea, and then the, all the continents, they started drifting away from each other, which is the seaflow spreading concept. So as the Indian subcontinent break apart from Pangaea, it started a northward drift towards Eurasia. And, and finally, India docked against Eurasia and the mountain chains of Himalayas came into being. So presently, the situation is like that. 
the Indian subcontinent, it's continuously being pushed against Eurasia, which leads to underthrusting of the crust and the thickening of crust. Hence, we have got huge mountain ranges. And it's not just the mountain ranges. These mountain ranges, due to continuous buildup of stress, they get broken, which we call as through specific lines, which we call as faults. And these faults, when it are uh, simply the crevasses or you can say cracks among huge rock bodies. So when cracks develop and there is external stress going on, sometimes these cracks yield. And when they yield, they just release a tremendous amount of energy. And this energy travels in our earth crust in the form of waves. And uh, scientists, they have divided and principally there are two major or three major type of waves which are P waves, S waves and L waves. By P waves we means primary, by S means we mean secondary and by L waves we means Rayleigh waves or Lao waves. So these three waves they have different properties, they have different velocities. So by that characteristic we can easily differentiate the ground shaking moment. In P waves we have the ground shaking moment of one type may be to and fro. In secondary, we have both up and down and to and fro. And the low waves, they travel just on the surface waves. So if you will, I mean, if you will just try to listen about earthquakes, this is the P wave which reaches first to the observer. Say, for example, I'm sitting in a place. So I feel if you your senses are, uh, I mean, really good enough, you can feel the P waves coming first because the ground shaking movement will be different from S waves. So they will be feeble, they'll reach first, and uh, followed by S waves, which are more destructive. And they come, I mean, there is just a millisecond fraction. I mean, there's no more time that one will reach at, and after 15 minutes, there will be S wave. No, it will be followed by just a lag of two minutes or three minutes. Just, there is just a moment. So it is the time which really, uh, I mean, is frightening, because we cannot do much in case of if there is any sort of human population or human settlement. So that fraction of second, it can just clearly, I mean, result in a huge loss of life. So we need to understand. So I have some pictures, some slides to show you what's the current scenario for uh, today in Jammu and Kashmir. So the uh, first slide which you're seeing, it is the some stats about how much earthquakes have been detected in per year and hundred, hundred of them they cause damage. And the largest earthquake which we have experienced, it's about 9.5 magnitude. I mean, it's a scale by which we measure the intensity of the earthquake. So it was in Chile in 1960, and second largest in Sumatra, third largest in Japan. So this is the largest earthquake. So similarly, the deadliest earthquake, which has it's been recorded in central China, which has had, happened around 1556. And we can see there was more than 8 lakh of casualties. Similarly in China again, Tangshan, then Haishang in China. It's again casualties more than 2.5 lakhs, similarly. And then when we come to classification of earthquakes, I mean there is also, yeah, uh, earthquakes happen at plate boundaries. But the, again, other thing is where exactly do that happen? If they'll happen deep inside earth crust, so we don't have to worry. So we classify them as deep earthquakes, which have depth of around about 300 to 700 kilometers. And similarly, we have shallow earthquakes. If the shallow earthquake is that, it happens at less than 70 kilometers of depth. So it is the most disaster one, because we'll feel the maximum amount of energy, because it's so shallow, it will just uh, tear apart all the earth crust on which we live. And the center one is intermediate, which happens about 70 to 300 kilometers. And similarly, this is a picture of about north, and the black bars which you are seeing, it's the trend of Himalayas. Actually, there are two almost 90 degree bends in the northeast, sorry, northwest, and in the eastern part. So we reside somewhere here in the top, where 1842 you can see, and up to that, and the eight years, it shows about all the earthquake major events which has happened over all this Himalayan thrust boundary. By Himalayan thrust boundary, we mean there are huge collection of faults. And like I said, it is because of Indian subcontinent plates docking with the Eurasian plate. 
that's why we get a huge collection of faults and these faults are epicenters of movement we don't know when a fault will cause movement there will be movement in a fault so we try to just major keep a uh, keep an eye on the faults if a fault has moved in a recent part so there is a probability that it won't move again in a specific set of time maybe perhaps 100 years later or 200 years later but not in but again we cannot control it these are all just speculations of scientists just to understand the nature of earthquake and its timing so all across the himalayan there's thrust zone so in different colors you can see the year in which a particular ha uh, event has happened so if i'll start from the west towards east you can see in kabul 1842 and then in 2005 earthquake which probably we all have witnessed maybe yeah even i i remember i was in 10th standard at that time and i was in school so it was a pretty horrific uh, experience so that is marked by 2005 and then in 1555 1888 1905 similarly we have divided scientists have divided the himalayan whole himalayan range into seismic gaps based upon the rupture which they have produced the longer the duration the more uh, vulnerable is for the more expectancy for earthquake to happen is there more so if you would see <coughs> the central gap it has again 1803 1505 1833 1934 and similarly in the Assam Gap, we have earthquakes ranging from 1700s up to 1950 and not recent than that. So you can see the 2005 earthquake, there's a huge gap starting from 1555 up to 1905. 1905 up to today, it's almost 100 years, perhaps more than that. And there was no earthquake major in Punjab Plains, in Kashmir Gap, which we call. In 2005, this was an extreme event, but the central gap here it still remains so scientists they speculate that there can be there is a possibility of a huge earthquake in near future we don't know when but there is going to happen this because of all the structure and tectonics involved uh, at the place which we are living in so the Kashmir gap we live in it and we have to be aware of that so if we'll talk about next slide see the, which, this is the magnitudes of earthquakes all across the gap we can see we have uh, all the huge number of uh, earthquakes with huge magnitudes like the minimum being 7.4 to the maximum being 8.6 and trust me 7 and 8 magnitudes these are really really high I mean it can turn earth literally upside down the recent event in Fukushima which resulted in the nuclear disaster the earthquake was around 7 or so so for a country like Japan I mean, coping up with a seven magnitude, I mean, that resulted even in the nuclear fallout. So a place like us, we need to be aware of the situation since you can see the bars of magnitude and how much population is affected by it. So the next one, uh, we didn't, I have talked about it already. So it, this says about the sense of movement. So this is uh, beyond the scope of present discussion. So I'll skip this. And if we talk about earthquakes during last 100 years in Himalayas and Hindu Kush ranges, which are magnitude of 7 to 8, I mean, we have in Western Himalaya around 40 such earthquakes, in Eastern Himalaya 40, and Central Himalaya just 10. So what's the population distribution like? In high seismic zones, we have 55% of our population residing in high seismic zones, which are most vulnerable for any fallout, God forbid. And the most vulnerable are just 20 12 percent and the less little vulnerable they are just 18 percent that resides beyond in the floodplains of Delhi if we go further south from our place and in India between 1819 and 1950 so earthquakes of 7.8 to 8.7 how much they were there are says the data in 1905 we got in Kangra about 7.8 magnitude on Bihar and Nepal border we 1934 we got 8.3 in Upper Assam in 1950, we got 8.5. In Shillong, 1897, we got 18, 8.7. And in Kutch region in 1819, we got 8 magnitude of an earthquake. So this is a list of other major earthquakes. So you can see there is, I mean, there is no such place which is immune to earthquakes. I mean, this shows a list about ranging from a minimum of 6 to 7 or 8, ranging about 8 earthquake. So we have Srinagar, Udhampur, Kathua. This is about our state. And then it's connected towards our eastern parts in Pakistan as well, in Quetta, Muzaffarabad, Uttarakashi, and then we have Chamoli, Assam as well. 
Koina, Burj, Anjar, Latur, Jabalpur. I mean, all these places, they have experienced an earthquake ranging from uh, in 1803 up to 2005. So this is a hazard map so of our state. So um, if you'll see all the major districts, starting from Uri has been shown here, because Uri has experienced a big, I mean, the earthquake of 2005. The epicenter was supposed to be, it's around Uri. So that's why we have shown it. All the major, we can see Jammu, it's... Uh, around in high hazard also. It's red in color. Jammu is also. And Kishtwar, it's totally, I mean, it's, it has the darkest red color. If you'll see the, at the bottom, you have a scale with the white color showing lowest hazard and the uh, darkest color in red, it shows the high hazard. So we can see all the major R districts, they are all in red color. Be it Jammu, Kishtwar, Leh, Kargil, Srinagar, Kupwada, Uri. I mean, all the places where we technically reside in, this is already in a high hazard seismic zone. We need to understand this. And next, this is again, I have talked about the epicenter, these circles, these show the moment of damage. The inner circle, it's the area which is affected most by the ground shaking moment. And eventually the ground shaking moment, it dies as we, it moves away from the epicenter. Epicenter is the point at which the ground shaking, the fault has ruptured and the ground shaker, shaking has started and it travels in all the directions and all the 360 directions. So, and the arrows, they show about the movement at each fault, and this is actually a map of our place, and it's a detailed high level, and I think this is uh, something which is beyond the scope of this present discussion, but uh, still I have shown you just to get you a sense of an idea. So, let's talk about next. This is again the same circles. We can see in blue there is a gap, and again I'll move forward. We'll, uh, this is out of uh, the scope of this present discussion. And Roger Bilham, Professor Roger Bilham, he visited Kashmir in, uh, after 2005 earthquake just to know the structural setup. And he said that Kashmir earthquake would be the start of a sequence that lead to bigger earthquakes because it's a chain reaction. Because if there is an earthquake at one place, it may trigger the another faults as well because we live in an area which is traversed by numerous number of faults. And these faults, they're not visible to each and every eye. You, you will be highly lucky when you'll, feel, uh, when you'll see fault from a long distance. I mean, um, the point I'm saying is it's, these faults are not exposed. These are always covered maybe by forest or soil cover or debris. So you've got to have that observation eye, which geologists do, which can, I mean, demarcate or tell about, yeah, this place runs, a fault, uh, a fault runs right through this place. And there are specific uh, indicators if you take geology as a subject. So you will develop that eye, you will develop that keen eye to look about the uh, faults, what, how to observe them and how to recognize them. And similarly, he said that he's concerned that earthquake has thrust the frontal thrust systems towards Jammu. Because as we, the plate tectonics, like I said in my earlier, the plate tectonics, it pushes towards the Eurasian plate. So there are numerous faults, cracks that develop in earth crust. So Jammu, unfortunately, sits right on top of one of that frontal thrust. If, unfortunately, uh, a movement happens, the movement will be of magnitude more than 7, and it will destroy each and everything. It will put technically uh, Earth upside down, all the courses of rivers. I've got some images in my uh, later presentation. I'll show it to you. So let's move on. We know that there is a central gap, which has not... I mean, activated in the recent past. So there is a strong possibility that it will be activated in future. So we expect an earthquake of uh, around more than seven magnitude because uh, of the huge central seismic gap. And uh, the uh, Bilham, Mr. Bilham, seismologist, he works in University of Colorado, USA, and he talked about us, and he says that earthquake of magnitude nine is likely to trigger landslides that would dam the Jhelum River, I mean, they could change the uh, course of rivers, even uh, uh, slippage can happen over 300 kilometers, the earth will move. Uh, this is a really terrifying data, I mean, frightening data from him. So uh, let's talk about, I mean, the star. It is the same earthquake which we talked about in 2005, and you could see the extent in blue in 100 kilometers, all its effect was noticed. And similarly, there was an earthquake, again, with the star. If it happens, so how much of population would be under cover of it? All the major districts of our state, which we are on the left, there are numbers. 
and Srinagar has more than one lakh of uh, more than 12 lakh of population so it will be under that effect similarly we have Jammu as well Jammu has 15 lakh of population so 15 lakh people they are at the risk clearly and not only earthquake there will be dam burst since we have huge chunk of water and we have we are lucky to produce hydroelectricity so we would have cloud burst desertification So not just earthquakes, we can have dam bursts, we would have, we would have cloud bursts, we have desertification, we have soil erosion, we have floods, we would have, I mean, a lot of natural hazards uh, accompanying with it. So if we'll move on to the next slide. So this is a hazard map. So uh, what we have done, I work with Professor G. M. Bhatt, he is my supervisor, so he works on uh, earthquake as well. So we have installed few observatories. I mean, around about we have uh, currently more than four, but this slide is probably older. We have one in Doru Observatory. We have in Punch. We have in Jammu at University of Jammu behind Department of Geology. And we have in Bunny uh, as well. So what this observatory does, it continuously uh, accounts the ground shaking movements. If that happened, we don't know, because the ground shaking movements sometimes they are so feeble that they remain unnoticed from human eye. So scientists, we have developed an instrument which is uh, fitted inside the ground and it's like a pendulum. So it only detects each and every ground movement which happens. So it makes a record of day to day, hour to hour, particularly or how much movement has been happening, which fault has yielded, which fault has not moved. So each and everything. So this is about all the earthquake hazard map which I have uh, made. You can see there is also a fault training, these lines. These are the major faults which run across which are, I mean, uh, observed and identified as for them. There can be numerous faults more than that as well. But up to that, we know this much. So the next slide, it's a Google Earth image. So on in red, you can see all the events which has happened at places over past few years. I mean, here it's Jammu. This is Riyasi, Ramban, and particularly in Chenar Valley. I belong to Chenar Valley, so in Chenar Valley has witnessed more than, I don't know, uh, 50 or 60 earthquakes. There keeps on happening. Last time I was there, and there was, again, I noticed few earthquakes. I mean, they were of mild tremors, but still there are earthquakes. So you can see all the Chenar Valley, it's been infested by all the uh, epicenters. So this means there are numerous uh, covered faults, which are active, and uh, they, uh, uh, they produce slight tremors. So we know about Chenar Valley is being uh, very, I mean, and also Chenar Valley has been made a hydroelectric hub. There are, uh, I think, uh, there is a huge dam at Bagleha, and probably uh, there are more than 20 sites which have been identified for making huge, huge reservoirs. So taking in view about the tremors which are happening in there, so we really need to check, should we make dams at that places? Or if yes, so what are we doing to safeguard the population which resides along that Chenar Valley? So talking about this this is the beyond this is a cross section and the surface structure when the fault it uh, comes across uh, the ground surface and it yields outside the surface so this is beyond the scope of this uh, discussion today i'll just be talking about disasters and earthquakes so this is a picture which is in kangan valley in bag in pakistan occupied kashmir you can see the intensity of earthquake all the whole chunk of mountain has moved down so what if there is a huge village on this ridge? The whole, whole village will be under jeopardy, right? We can see the intensity of uh, the rupture. All the mountain block has moved down. And similarly, this is again the rupture which happened in the ground. So our team went to the site just to investigate the after effects of earthquakes. So the ruptures, you can see how wide they are. I mean, the ground yields. I mean, it's uh, the intensity above six or seven, it's really hard. So this is again, you can see the whole mountain face has come down. And uh, on the left, there is a water also oozing, water also oozing along with the black water. I mean, the locals, they witnessed that there's a kala pani, kala pani nikala, earthquake ke baad. So it happens. I mean, there is a liquefaction process as well. It's all ground shaking movement. The water table, water uh, is thrown outside. So water started oozing. I mean, uh, there was a a groundwater aquifer which was perhaps broken and the water started oozing at Uri area in Sultan Dhaki Kamal Ghat. So landslide as well as oozing of black water. So you can see the next picture, it also shows the aftermath of an earthquake rupture on a slope. 
and again you can see the intent of the landslide i mean you can see the field agricultural fields they are on one side and there are a few houses as well so during an earthquake all the cliffs this this is the type of terrain that was have, uh, affected in part and we have similar terrain here as well if you'll notice in jammu division as well in chenab valley in kashmir we have similar i mean traversed by huge uh, by these ravines and water moving so it's really vulnerable then again this is again you can see the destruction you can also see the roofs there is no wall the roofs they are now touched to the ground this is the aftermath of an earthquake of more than seven magnitude and this is at gundi gujra and uh, this see the damage is caused by building i mean the roof is leveled with the ground you can see the extent of damage i mean no structure is safe in an earthquake be it how much strong it is be it how much concrete it is yes there are some engineering uh, Uh, some aspects if we will consider while making any building so we may perhaps make ourselves safer but we need to know and again this the whole township has been ruined in bag these images they are mixed they are cuz the earthquake it happened in uh, pakistan occupied kashmir but similarly the waves traveled all to our parts even tremors were felt in delhi as well delhi had some cracks in their buildings so uh, this village this pictures are mixed these are some from pakistan occupied kashmir some from our kashmir and even from delhi as well so again we can see if uh, this is a view of our old jammu city you can see the river tawi is flowing and you can see we have a similar type of terrain i mean like which i showed in a pre previous picture this looks like a vulnerable area this also looks like a vulnerable area since i talked about that there is a huge fault running beneath uh, our land beneath our crust so if there is a movement and cause of the all the kashmir gap which we call it there has been no earthquake in jammu uh, surrounding area so if this is a speculation if there happens a earthquake this will be more than magnitude of 7 and we have we have seen already pictures not 7 i mean uh, professor bilham he has made a prediction of about around 9 if 9 earthquake happens so eventually tawi will change its course of river its a uh, course of uh, running and this vulnerable area maybe perhaps there will be a huge landslide So next we can see how do we make our buildings we have uh, on top left Raghunath Bazaar then we have from Prani Mandi view then we have residency road and this is Kanak Mandi and these pictures were taken by uh, professor Bilham himself himself so he said that look at the structures i mean uh, at bottom at the top we are just moving out at bottom we are laying foundation at one place and then at the top we put a slab and then we move forward over overshadowing the lane again and then again top we move out and this structure is in uh, engineering in engineering this structure is highly susceptible to damage if there is an earthquake even a slight earthquake this buildings won't stand that and if we talk about nine uh, so then god god forbid if that happens now unfortunately it should not happen but still we cannot ignore we cannot wait for a disaster to happen and then look oh ho oh, kya ho gaya kya ho gaya i mean we have to be prepared at first this is what education tell us this is about about awareness tells us and then you can see the whole piece of mountain has come down this is the intensity of an earthquake i mean it won't look anything any uh, construction if we'll come across an earthquake we need to make our way on this is in again pakistan administered kashmir and we have similar terrain like this because the geology is same the himalayas they are rising from east in the pakistan and they coming cutting across jammu kashmir himachal nepal assam and all together all to to the assam in the east so we have similar terrains we have similar geology so if earthquake can do this there in pakistan the same earthquake can do a lot of damage similar to that here as well so this is again a landslide which happened near udhampur i mean it's and we think that it's an earthquake induced you can see if uh, it's covered by vegetation now but this this spot it has this debris it has fallen down from this place to up to down so this is what we need to look for some signatures and uh, see the landslide at road uh, all the roads alignment it gets destroyed each and everything this is the aftermath of an earthquake and uh, well this place is now pretty much changed because of the road construction but still we have similar situation of landslides going in samroli Uh, everybody knows i mean recently there was a snowfall and there was huge jam and people tried to move towards patnitap just to witness uh, uh, snowfall and just imagine if you have to go through i mean eventually people do every every day 
uh, there is landslide area and you have to mow and if God forbid there's an earthquake and in these kind of rainy rains on we have monsoons we have it all so it makes the place really vulnerable of a landslide and it can be a really huge threat for the commuters and uh, this is in Neelam Valley you can see on the other side of LOC uh, you can see what's uh, the landslide here the road is blocked and there are a couple of cars and all stuck everything is stuck and uh, this was specially opened this Aman Setu Pond just to for scientists to investigate the effects on both sides of uh, LOC what were the effects on Pakistan how is Pakistan dealing with that and what were the effects on our side as well and how are we dealing with that because we have to stand up eventually that's uh, what we call as um, uh, hazard preparedness we need to prepare from the hazard and we need to back up and this is I talked about that so there is again a possibility of inundation maps maybe uh, the landslide what's the effect of landslide it will block all the valleys okay and there will be uh, uh, forming of reservoir of water and water will rise up because there will be blockage so it will inundate maybe all the low-lying areas so this talks about the disaster management policy we all have uh, since I'm not talking about disaster management it will be just about earthquakes and knowing about it but uh, just for the sake of knowing we have pre-disaster planning, sin-disaster planning and post-disaster planning pre means uh, at first before knowing if you know about the disaster and you talk about it and then sin disaster is how do you act when there is a disaster when you are actually in the disaster and the third one it talks about post disaster then we have to work we have to grow up I mean we have to be resilient because human race yeah the different types of disaster happen they come and go but human races have survived and it will survive so uh, post disaster planning uh, talks about reconstruction rehabilitation providing help to the needy and in pre disaster we need all the corrective measures of existing structures if you feel like like uh, your home or your office is not up to that mark it's need to be built again then you can correct it disaster monitoring you can monitor I mean talk to various scientists or talk to engineers talk to about the stability of structures education and training awareness maybe tell your classmates and tell your many of us they belong to villages and in villages village uh, in village people are not uh, that much you know uh, fortunate to get educated to get aware so uh, children and students they are a source of dispensing information you can go to your villages talk to your village head maybe bench or sub bench and talk about all the villages if there are any vulnerabilities you can talk out and uh, get get them straight on and talk to government as well our government representatives or even NGOs can help you and similarly in during a disaster planning we need to have a search and rescue look for people because in earthquake it's a really terrible site medical treatment plan, shelter plan, psychological treatment plan, disposal of dead bodies if there are any so coordination and implementation voluntary organizations and warning systems and stuff so similarly it's post disaster planning which talks about reconstruction and rehabilitation I mean reconstruction we have to make construction again but this time we need to be sure that this is earthquake resistant with modern technology and selection of site and rehabilitation children are the most affected widows and old people are the most affected which, um, who have n uh, no one to take care of them so we as a society in a society brothers and sisters we need to help each and every one and there are also business and commercial activities people need food people need transportation people need medical help so we need we even need psychological treatment centers because if you have witnessed an earthquake ground shaking movement it's a terrible terrible experience so it remains in your uh, in your memory for a quite long time and these are details of disaster and plan management plan so this is not the scope of our current discussion so we'll just uh, talk about it later if we'll get a time so we need to monitor disaster as well and what is the role of key stakeholders women and children and uh, they play a lead role in disaster management in dispensing information in spreading in uh, in managerial skills like I'm mean, managing each and everything because nobody can think around uh, I mean we cannot think about we cannot talk about and uh, and everybody needs uh, at that time at, uh, attention so traditional knowledge with healthcare and compassion because with traditional knowledge Hamare Jo Purke hai, Bude hai, old people they also have witnessed earthquakes and that's why they used to live in mud houses because mud houses they are less uh, susceptible to develop cracks as compared to concrete houses 
So there are lots of, um, I mean, uh, plus points of being mud houses. So we can take tips from them as well. And uh, at a household level, you can talk to your family, your brother, your sister, uh, wh what's going to happen and how we have to act. And then mass education and awareness, it forms a really good part. I mean, really important part. If you have learned something here at this time, you need to dispense this information to your younger brothers, your family, and in your village, in your maybe society. And then armed forces. We need not to forget about armed forces. Armed forces are the only first responders in any kind of disaster. So they help us in leadership, in capacity building, sahara dete hain, hausla hazai karte hain, help to karte hain karte hain, no doubt about it. And the incident command system, they can monitor. I mean, not only there is uh, destruction, there is also a uh, chance of spreading epidemic of diseases because there is no uh, supply of clean water, no supply of sanitation, no supply of personal hygiene. So armed forces really help us in every part. And in supply and chain management, you need to provide food. And maybe there is, there is a village which is very, very remote, unconnected to us with any road. So society So armed forces, they really play their major role there as well. So first responders, training of first responders, specialized search and rescue teams. Because the first responder, as soon as the time goes by, so chancing of, chances of finding a life survivor among debris, it goes really down. So first respond, uh, responders, they are really vital in this type of uh, scenario. And then international cooperation, obviously, we can take help from uh, or help or information or how did you dealt with, what was the situation like, talking to international neighbors, which, which will help us a, a, a lot as well. And uh, <clears throat> quick and effective response. Like I said, how quick you are to respond. Because as soon as the time goes by, after an earthquake event, so the possibility of finding a, uh, a live survivor, be it a human, be it a cattle, or be it any uh, uh, living organism. I mean, uh, so it, it, it really uh, goes down. I mean, so what should be the way forward? What should we do? Yeah, we talked about each and everything. But we need to know about it. So what should be the way forward about this? So it will be established, maintained, and continually improve disaster and emergency management systems, which we call as DEMS. We need to make maintain it and establish it and continually keep on improving because uh, everything is changing with time and uh, we need to make upgrade if there is already a uh, structure so we need to upgrade it make it uh, disaster resistant be it an industrial structure be it as a national critical structures infrastructure be it a college building be it a hospital be it a fire and emergency services anything we need to make it disaster resistant and then institute foolproof safety, security, monitoring, and regulatory mechanisms. And the uh, next step would be state-of-the-art early warning, communication, and resource and knowledge man management system. Early warning uh, like I talked, I mean, there are three types of waves. P wave is the first one to reach it, and fraction of seconds. If, if uh, you have like systems, like I said, that we have four establishment monitoring systems. So if something happens, if there is a P wave like that, so we can eventually know that the people in department. So we can dispense that uh, information to measuring areas, to uh, surrounding areas quickly so that they can, I mean, move to safer places or something like that. So this is an early warning system. We should develop it. And communication and rules. I mean, it's not in earthquake. I mean, they, when there is a ground shaking movement, I mean, there is, an, and there is a huge earthquake. All the communication line, all the poles, all the mobile towers, all the electricity, there will be nothing. I mean, everything will be destroyed. So it becomes really hard to connect to your loved ones. To connect to your, uh, I mean, maybe there is a, your brother is reading somewhere else or something like that. So connection gets really, really difficult. So we need to develop that kind of uh, our infrastructure so we can withstand. Because we know that we live in Himalayas and because of our earth, our banavat is that if the earth is coming here, we will come here. It will come here. So how are we ready with ourselves? So we should know about it. We should know state of early warning, bhi hona chahi, communication, bhi resource and knowledge and management. We should know about it. And... Uh, uh, we need disaster risk insurance for individuals as well as insurance because uh, money ka bhi issue a jata hai. everything is lost so we don't have anything to sustain our family and ourselves so there should be a uh, insurance as well from the risks of disaster 
develop indigenous and eco-friendly technologies for low-cost disaster resistance, bamboo mission, timber lacing, dajji diwari. Dajji diwari is a concept if you are in Kashmir. So in Kashmir, when you have seen the house, there was a beam in the house. And the beam is all connected to each other. So in the beam, the beam is the beam in the house. So the concept is that the structure is as a whole. If there is a sudden movement, it will be hit. When it will be hit, it will not fall. That's the Dajji and Dewar. Similarly, bamboo mission. Bamboo, why bamboo? Because bamboo is lighter and it's stronger. Earthquakes don't kill people. It's the buildings that do. But if you don't know from earthquakes, if you are in the ground, if you have an earthquake, then nothing will happen. But if you are in a vulnerable building made up of concrete and suddenly, unfortunately, there is an earthquake, so, debris in the debris or the chances of death in the debris. So, how do we make our house? This is very important. Very important. And then, the Institute of Research and Development in Frontier Technologies, New Disciplines for Disaster Risk Reduction, we need to do something like that. And then, one time catch up of the key responders. On one side, we always have to talk about a meeting with the first responders. We always have to talk about a meeting with them. जो वो हमें नसीहत देंगे वो फॉलो करते रहेंगे क्योंकि जान है तो जहान है और कंटेम्परेरी एंड कंटिन्यूस इन्वायरमेंट स्कैनिंग जहां हम रह रहे हैं आसपास की जगह को देख लेना है वी नीड टू लुक अराउंड इन व्हाट टाइप ऑफ जियोलॉजी वी आर लिविंग इन व्हाट टाइप कहीं हम किसी नाले में हैं ऐसे या कहीं खड़ पे हमारा घर है या किसी ऊंची चट्टान पे हमारा घर है या कोई ऐसा लूज मटेरियल पे हमारा घर है कि कल को अगर खुदा ना रास्ता छोटा सा हल्का सा भी एक ग्राउंड शेकिंग मूवमेंट हुआ तो वो कहीं बह ना जाए और इसमें चैरिटेबल और सोशल रिलीजियस इंस्टीट्यूशंस का भी बहुत हम वो रखते हैं जैसे से फॉर एग्जांपल हम मंदिर के किसी हेड को या प्रीस्ट को बोल के इस बारे में बोलें कि आप ये चाहे जितने भी यहाँ पे श्रद्धालु आते हैं उनको ये इनफॉरमेशन दें ऐसे सिमिलरली मस्जिद के इमाम को भी बोल के हम कह सकते हैं चर्च में फादर को बोल के कह सकते हैं क्योंकि उन लोगों का सोसाइटी में बहुत ऊपर उनका एक स्टेटस होता है और उनकी बात सुनी जाती है so we need that kind of socio-religious institutions to work with us, I mean so to talk with us and to help us in dispensing this sort of information among the masses. And South Asian communities, education and awareness which we talk about it and oriental best question. South Asian communities ki baare mein isle baat karte hain ki Japan aur vagera wo hamare earth mein there is a pacific ring of fire. So wahaan pe pacific ring of fire ke baare mein aapne agar suna hooga, I mean which is bound, there is a boundary. Along that, like I talked about uh, convergent boundary plate and uh, divergent plate and transform plate. So Japan, it sits on a convergent plate. Jahan pe Pacific plate jo hai, wo andar dhasi ja rahi hai, Japan ke saath. To usse kya hota ki us pure ring of fire jo bana hua, wahan pe earthquakes aate rahate hai. So Japan is really expert. They know how to deal with earthquakes because they have uh, experienced a lot. और वो इतना सीख सीख के इतना डेवलप हो गए हैं कि वहाँ पे अगर सात मैग्नीट्यूड का अर्थ को एक भी आ जाए तो वहाँ पे कैजुअल्टी कोई नहीं होती है, which is like a impossible thing to hear. I mean having a seven or eight magnitude of earthquake and no one dies. I mean that's really really impressive. So this is what we talk about. We need to talk about the countries as well, neighbouring who have went through. How do they do it? How they have developed technology? Because it's again फिर बाद में it's a ये question it's a question about life and death. And thank you. This is what I need to talk about. And uh, I hope if you have any questions. So I hope I made my point and talked about that. And thanks again.